Good day everyone, this is Sir Jonathan V. Mayo. Sama-sama sa pagsulong ng edukalidad of the Calabarzon Pivot Ship, addressing the challenge of quality in basic education of the Region 4A, empowerment, excellence, and efficiency. San Pedro National High School welcomes you all to its very first virtual learning continuity plan orientation 2020 CUM Learning Delivery Modality Support System. This discussion will be focusing on distance learning, learning delivery modality. These are the acronyms that we will be meeting throughout this discussion. First is DO, DepEd Order, LDM, Learning Delivery Modality, MDL, Modular Distance Learning, ODL, Online Distance Learning, SLM, Self Learning Modules, ADM, Alternative Delivery Modes, OER, Open Educational Resources, LMS, Learning Management System, LR, Learning Resources, ICT, Information and Communication Technology, PD, Professional Development, LAC, Learning Action Cell, AAP, American Academy of Pediatrics, WHO, World Health Organization. According to Depth Ed Order Number 21, Series of 2019, pages 96, this refers to a learning delivery modality where a learner is given materials or what we call the modules or the worksheets that will be delivered at home or access to resources and application, for example, the platforms that will be applied and utilized in online distance learning, which he or she will undertake self-directed study at home or in another venue. Commonly and specifically, that location will be our barangay halls. Learners engage in independent learning at home or in any physical learning space applicable by using learning materials or what we have as the modules that are accessible either online or stored on CD, DVD, or USB flash drive. We will be utilizing the USB flash drive since CD and DVD is nearly too obsolete. Or by viewing television lessons or listening to radio-based instruction while being geographically distant from the teacher. It is clear that there will be no face-to-face -face interaction between the teacher and the learners. The distance learning the teacher supervises and monitors the learner's progress. It is not enough and it will not stop in just giving and supplementing the materials. This will be followed by giving instructions and remediation if there is a need of situation and condition to enhance when needed and possible. Assistance may be provided by a learning facilitator who may be a parent or any member of the family or a community stakeholder. The parent will play an important role in this remote learning modality. Let's proceed. Like what I've said earlier, parents and guardians or any responsible adults who are in charge of guiding and supporting the learner at home shall be encouraged to come to the community learning space, which will be the barangay for us to meet the parent and to give the needed materials and to give the certain instructions na kinakailangan na malaman ng bata sa pamagitan ng kanilang mga magulang at pakikipagtulungan ng ating local government unit officials to confer with the teachers about the learner's progress. There are seven tips na pwede natin i-observe dito. First, model how to face crisis with compassion. The parent will be the one to model how to overcome the current situation like what we had right now, which is the pandemic. Kinakailangan na tayong mga magulang ang magbigay sa ating mga anak ng motibo para magpatuloy sa kanilang pag-aaral. Help your child maintain a schedule. Yes, time management ay kinakailangan. Pero yung time allotment ang isa sa pinakamahalaga. 
tamang magbigay ka ng oras, pero yung maglaan ka ng oras ay iba rito. Yes, this specific time ay para ako mag-aral. Magkaroon ka ng time para sa iyong anak para maglaro at oras naman para siya ay mag-aral. So that is what we call conditioning. Talking about conditioning, dedicate a space in your home for school work. The place for dining is different the, for the place of studying. Magkaibang lugar kung saan ka kumakain sa iyong hapagkainan at never dapat ka doong, doon din mag-aaral. Ang thinking mo, that place is for eating and not for studying. The same with, doon ka nag-aaral sa iyong kama. Pero mapapansin mo, nahihikayat ka na na magpahinga na lamang at matulog doon because it is not the proper place for studying. So we recommend and suggesting the parents to provide a specific place or location for the learning area of our students. Number four, ask your children about what they are learning. Yes, this will be a collaborative effort between the parent and the student. Ano na nga ba ang kalagayan ng iyong pag-aaral? Natututo ka ba? Anong topic ka na sa ngayon? So, kay na kailangan na may kinalaman din dito ang ating mga magulang since you will be the guide of your children. Number five, read with your children. Yes, this will be a moment of relationship between the parent and the student. Tell family stories. Yes, it is good to share your experiences, but I suggest never to compare the things that you have experienced before. Tasabihin mo saan iyong anak, noon kami nung araw, ang baon ko lang ganito, ang sisipag namin mag-aral, talaga kami kanya-kanya kami sulo kung saan kami nag-aaral. Talagang yung aming kalagay noon ay mas okay sa ngayon. It won't help our children. Hindi ito makakatulong sa bata. Lalong inaalis mo sa kanya yung thinking na ako ay mag-aral sa panahong meron ako sa ngayon. It is good to share what you had experienced before, but never to compare. And lastly, write about what you're going through. Isulat mo ngayon, nasaan ka na sa iyong plano ngayon, sa iyong goal, sa iyong pag-aaral. Ano na ang kalagayan ng iyong pag-aaral sa kasalukuyan? So it, ilan lamang to sa mga tips para sa mga magulang for us to guide our student and support them during this remote learning modality system. In addition, according to DepEd Order Number no. 7, Series of 2020, in our school calendar and activities, which authorizes the holding of Saturday classes. Yes, it is clear that our schedule will be from Monday through Saturday. It is to fill up the allotted period of classes that we need in our school calendars. It is to compress the school year. Learners may continue working on unfinished tasks, if any, during Saturdays. Otherwise, teacher may suggest some enjoyable activities such as designing their portfolio, reading for pleasure, worksheets, and additional module. In online distance learning, hindi po kinakailangan na araw-araw ang bata ay nasa harap ng screen ng kanyang computer at nakakonek sa kanyang internet. Mamaya, i-discuss po natin ang dalawang pamamaraan kung paano haharap ang ODL sa kanyang pag-aaral. There are four types of distance learning. First is modular distance learning. Second will be online distance learning. Third will be the television and radio broadcasting and telecasting. And fourth will be the blended learning. San Pedro National High School will be implementing two modalities. First is MDL or modular distance learning. And second is the online distance learning. I will be focusing and discussing the ODL. The online distance learning shall be applicable in schools where both the teachers and the learners have access to digital devices, which are our laptops, tablets, smartphones, Androids, or iPhones, and even desktop computers with available online resources and of course, internet connectivity. It is not enough that you have your smartphones with you. 
but of course your data load may expire. We recommend that we have a strong internet connection. Speaking of internet connectivity, there are learning resources to be used, but not limited to the following, which are been called as the self-learning modules or alternative delivery modes or ADM, textbooks, primary lessons, activity sheets, teacher-made videos and supplementary materials, and open educational resources or what we call as OERs. The good thing with ODL or in online distance learning is the teacher will provide the video clips that will be sent to the Google Classroom for further uh, learning lessons or discussions. This will be a good sort of material for them to follow the, the ongoing lessons, which will be part of the interactive lessons or what we know as the electronic books or ebooks and shall be available throughout the DepEd Learning Resources portal. DepEd Commons and or different DepEd recognized learning management system. Ngayon, I'm going to introduce the different application or what we call the platforms that we are going to utilize and employ in this online distance learning. Ito po ang ilan sa mga gagamitin nating mga aplikasyon in online distance learning. Una is what we call as Google Classroom. The Google Classroom ay siyang tumutulong para ma-organize natin ang information ng ating mga estudyante. Meron tong sariling instructions, learning, grading system, collaboration and assessment, measurement and evaluation. In Google Classroom, for the students or the learner to be able to join, they're just going to click the plus sign here for them to join a class. The teacher will be the one to create the class. So you as the student will be joining this class. Just click this part. Then you will be asked, telling you to ask your teacher for the class code, then enter it here. The teacher will be the one to provide the specific class code for the specific classroom provided for your class. Then you're just going to enter the code here, then join the class. Automatically, you will be in the classroom provided by your teacher. For example, this is my own classroom, which is named as Maestro Eitan for my science class. In my Google Classroom, there is a specific application where in we can have a video conference by just clicking this Meet link. This is what you call as the Google Meet application. When you click this link, you will be asked to join or start a meeting. Since you are the student, you will be joining the Google Meet. Then speaking of Google Meet, there are guidelines to be observed during the presentation. The first one is to make sure that you have a headset with a microphone. We recommend the use of headset or even an earpiece. In headset with a microphone, it can reduce the background noise, unlike with an earpiece with a microphone. Then, for example, I am using right now, what I have here is the condenser microphone wherein it can filter and rejoice the background noise. May iwasan natin yung ingay ng iyong kapatid, yung iyak ng iyong bunsong kapatid, yung tilaok ng manok ng kapitbahay. When you are using this condenser microphone, you can reduce and filter and only your voice will be heard. Ganun din sa headphone with microphone. Unlike with just merely using this earpiece with a microphone on it. Kasi pag ito ang ginagamit natin, kinig pati yung sigawan ng iyong kapitbahay. So we suggest to make use of a headset with a microphone. Or if it is available, you can make use of this one. Open presentation ahead of time. For example, your class will be on 8 a.m. So make sure that you are already in the Google Meet video conference 7.45, 15 minutes before the class for you to be able to prepare and for you to be able to condition yourself. Number three, mute microphone, please. 
if you are not asked to answer anything, just make sure that you have your microphone in mute mode. And of course, turn off your camera if there are connection problems. Somehow, the video resolution of your camera will hinder and will produce a troubleshoot with your internet connection. So we suggest if it is not necessary to view your video, make it turn off. Open chat box to ask questions. The good thing with this Google Meet application, there is a portion wherein we can exchange information through chat box. Instead of turning on your microphone, it's better to type whatever question you have or inquiry or additional information that you would like to raise. Ask for volunteer to monitor the chat for questions and comments. For example, in our usual face-to-face -face class before, in our normal situation, meron tayong tinatawag na monitor sa klase. Dito, pwede ka rin mag-assign ng specific student to monitor the chat box for them to have a responsibility during your virtual classes. Sa pamagitan nito, binibigyan mo ng pagkakataon ng ating mag-aaral na maging bahagi mismo ng ating discussion. So, meron tayong naglilista ng palabas-labas sa ating virtual conference sa pamagitan ng attendance. At meron din naman nag-monitor ng chat box kung may mga katanungan habang si teacher ay nagdi-discuss at nagpe-present in a PowerPoint show. So those are the things that we can do during the video conferencing. This is what we have in Google Meet. The teacher will be the one to provide the meeting. Just click the Meet here, then join or start a meeting. Then the teacher will be asked whatever the section it is or whatever name he or she would like to have in his class. For example, Maestro Eitan. Then continue. So I'm going to join the Google Meeting. Once I am in the Google Meeting, I will be asked for the joining information. This portion, ang ginagamit ng mga teacher para ikopyahin ito at siyang ibigay sa Google Classroom ng ating mga bata. Ito yung information link na binibigay namin sa ating mga estudyante para sila ay maka-join sa Google Meet Video Conference. So napakadali lamang. Si teacher, kokopyahin lamang to at ipay-paste or ipopo sa Google Classroom or ibibigay sa bata. Then si bata naman, ikiklik lamang yung link. Then automatically, he or she will be joining the Google Meeting. Also, in Google Meet, we can change the setting. Pwede kong baguhin ang audio ko, kung anong gagamitin kong microphone, kung anong gagamitin kong speaker. Ganon din sa video. I can change the resolution. Kung gusto kong maganda ang dating ko sa mga bata at mabilis naman yung aking internet, pwede kong itaas yung resolution from 360 to 720 pixels. Ganon din ang dating ng mga bata sa akin. Kung malabo ka ang iyong video resolution, pwede kong palinawin sa pamagitan ng pagbabago ng settings ng ating Google Meet. Ayan. That is the good thing with this Google Meeting. Another thing, I can change the layout. Kung ako ay nagpipresent ng PowerPoint presentation show, pwede kong gamitin ang sidebar kung saan nakikita ko yung presentation at nakikita ko rin yung mga bata sa loob ng Google Meet video conference. Pwede kong ilagay siya sa spotlight kung sino lamang yung i-image siya lamang makikita sa screen. At pwede ko rin i-show lahat ng mga daaral in the Google Meet video conference using the grid or the tiled layout na pwede kong bagu-baguhin. So, that is the advantage of using the Google Meet. And also, the very good point of Google Meeting is that I can record the meeting. This is the thing na pwede natin gawin sa loob ng Google Meeting. Na yung ongoing discussion ay pwede ko palang i-record at ito yung video na pwede kong ipo sa Google Classroom for those students na hindi naka-attend ng specific period or class maybe because of internet uh, connections error or internet connections may be low. Okay. So ito yung video na pwede nating ibigay sa ating mga mag-aaral para sila ay makahabol at makakatch up sa lesson for that specific period. 
which is a good sign. Just record the meeting, then accept the recording. Okay, then automatically it has been recorded. In terms of presenting, ako bilang teacher, pwede ako mag-present ng presentation using a window or a Chrome tab. Ibig sabihin, kung siya ay labas ng aking Google Chrome, pwede ko siyang i-present. At kung ano yung mga open sa aking Chrome tab, for example, bukas ang aking YouTube, bukas yung aking DepEd Commons, bukas, bukas yung aking ibang application, pwede kong i-link ang presentation dun sa mga bukas na Chrome tab na tinatawag. For example, I'm going to present a window. Yung aking PowerPoint presentation show, ang siya kong PPDN. So I click it, then share it. Then automatically, the PowerPoint will be displayed in the Google Meetings. At dito kami magkakaroon ng virtual conference with my students. Dito kami magkakaroon ng interactive and collaborative discussion with my learners. That is a good point. Okay, let's proceed. In Google Meet, there are guidelines or netiquettes or etiquettes to be observed. First, Students are to find a suitable, quiet environment to be part of a call. Of course, unang-una dapat establish ni mag-aaral o ng bata ay yung lugar kung saan siya magkakaroon ng video conference. Hindi yung ang background mo ay yung nakasampay na damit ng iyong mga kapatid sa likuran. Hindi yung naglalakad yung tatay at nanay mo sa likuran mo. Find a suitable place for you. Then of course, students are not to be in their bedroom or bathroom. Observe pa rin natin yung proper etiquette natin na we are in a virtual classroom. We are in our virtual face-to-face -face class and we are not in just Facebook, okay? We are not utilizing a social networking site but rather we are using the Google Meeting Video Conference, which is our virtual conference. Backgrounds behind the students need to be appropriate. Yan, i-observe natin yung ating likuran kung ano ba yung nakikita ng ating mga classmates at ni teacher sa iyong background. So be aware of that. Students should be dressed appropriately. Yes, it is proper to observe your dress code. Hindi dahil tayo ay nagmimit lamang via internet connection ay kung ano na lamang damit mo. But we are not requiring you to wear your uniforms. Instead, make it formal naman. Okay? Hindi naman kinakailangan ay naka-uniform ka ng San Pedro National High School at naka-ID ka pa. Just make it formal and presentable. That, it, that is enough. Okay? Look wide awake. Hair comb, etc., and ready to learn. Yes, observe your proper hygiene. Make sure you mute your microphone when you are not speaking. It is very necessary to observe that when you are not asked to talk, just turn your microphone to mute mode. It will be helpful not just for you, but of course for your classmate to focus and listen to whatever topics is being discussed by your teacher. So observe this. It is not enough that you are, yun nga ang sinasabi natin, wala kang pakialam sa iyong kaklase. Basta ako, go lang ako sa gusto ko. No, observe your colleague or your classmates. Lastly, use headphones if you can to reduce background noise. Yes, it is good that Sabi ko nga kanina, if you have your headphones with microphone with you, it is better to use it. Unlike of using just merely your earpiece. It is for us to filter and to reduce the background noise. Let's continue. Additional application or platforms that we can utilize and we can use is to establish the attendance of our learners. Ito yung worry ng karamihan. Paano ma-observe ni teacher ang attendance ni bata during the online distance learning? May sagot po dito. Ito yung pagbibigay ng Google Form sa ating mga mag-aaral. Una, si teacher magpo-provide ng form ng attendance with the contents 
or the needed information ng ating klase, then automatically when the student responded to the and submitted their answer in the Google form, their response will be transmitted and transferred to the attendance spreadsheet. Malilipat ito ngayon sa Excel file ni teacher sa kanyang Google Drive. And we can now observe the attendance of the students. Plus, there is what we have here is the QR code generator or the quick response code. Instead of answering, writing, and submitting the response every day, si teacher ay magpo-provide ng Q QR code specific for a certain student. Mabibigyan, for example, we have the 40 students in one section. Lahat sila ay mabibigyan ng kanya-kanyang QR code na i-scan na lamang nila using their application in their smartphones. So, pwede nila lang i-download yung QR code reader. Then, automatically, itatapat lamang nila doon yung camera. Then, once they had scanned the code, the response will be transferred to the spreadsheet automatically. So, hindi na kinakailang mag-type ni bata araw-araw. Iscan na lamang, papasok po ako sa inyong klase. Iscan ko to, then automa automatically, I am in your attendance sheet. Another one, this application can be used by the teacher alone. Si teacher may extension sa kanyang Google Chrome. Wherein, we have the Google Meet attendance. This is an extension that we can install in our Google Chrome. Ano nga bang Google Meet attendance? Once we join the attendance, the teacher will click this Apple icon in the upper right corner, which is the Google Meet, then join it, then automatically, whoever is in the class or in the Google Meet video conference, I may re recognize the Meet attendance application. And kapag kinilik na namin tung checkbox, ibig sabihin, magkakaroon kami ng list ng student kung sino yung pumasok at kung sino yung lumalabas during the classes. Ibig sabihin, we can monitor our students. Pumasok ka ng ganitong oras because may oras to na nakalagay. Then, lumabas ka habang tayo ay may discussion pa. Maybe because you have a problem with your connection. Then, nakapasok ka uli. Mapapakita dito kung anong oras ka uli nag-in. Then, nawala ka ng matagal na oras. Kita ni teacher kung anong oras ka bumalik. Or kita ni teacher kung hindi ka na bumalik. So this is the uh, advantage of using this Meet Attendance application in the Google Meet video conference. So ang worry ng karamihan kung paano man natin ma-observe ang attendance ng ating mga bata, ito po ang kasagutan. Prepared si teacher in monitoring the attendance of every student. Okay, that is establishing the attendance information of our learners. Let's continue. In terms of discussion and lecture, these are some of the application na gagamitin ng San Pedro National High School online distance learning modality. First is the, what we call as the Padlet. Sa Padlet, this is an application na hindi na kailangan i-install pa ni, ni bata sa kanyang laptop or sa kanyang cellphone. Automatically, pwede natin itong i-search agad sa ating Google Chrome. Pwede mong i-search sa iyong search engine, padlet.com. Then, automatically, nadong ka na sa Padlet account mo. Then, in this application, the student and the teacher can exchange information. Hindi tulad sa Google Meet na chat lamang ang makikita. Dito sa Padlet, pwede mag-post ng picture, ng video clip, at pwede magkaroon ng palitan ng information. Ito ang gagamitin natin as a sort of interactive and collaborative application for our learners, which is a good point. In addition to, we have the sideboard. Kung in our normal situation, meron tayong green board or what we call as blackboard in our classes, in online distance learning, we have the sideboard. Sideboard is an application which is known as the whiteboard in a virtual class, wherein Dito magkakaroon ng discussion to si teacher. Pwede siya mag-drawing dito. Magkaroon ng model, magkaroon ng clip arts, magkaroon ng graph during the discussion or the lecture. So makikita ni bata, ginagamit ni teacher itong whiteboard para lamang siya nagsusulat sa blackboard ng inyong 
classroom sa normal situation. And, and of course, we can record the ongoing discussion using this another application which is the screen Castify, na si teacher na lamang ang gagamit nito para i-record ang ongoing classes. Okay, that is another point in ODL. Let's continue. Another platform or application aside from Google Classroom is the Edmodo. Mapapansin natin dito sa Edmodo, hindi po to Facebook account. Somehow, katulad lamang ng Facebook yung kanyang environment or yung kanyang setting. But this is an exclusive application for educational purposes. Pwede rin tong gamitin ni bata at ni teacher in exchanging information or in uploading and downloading the needed materials or modules. Okay, let's continue. Also, maybe you are familiar with this DepEd Commons. The DepEd already introduced this and maybe some of you already practice using this. There are five simple steps in using this application. First is to type your school ID number. For San Pedro National High School, we have 301143. Again, 301143. That is the school ID of San Pedro National High School. Then you will be asked to choose your school, San Pedro National High School. And you're going to select what grade level you are in right now. For example, grade 7, 8, 9, or 10. Then you will be asked to click on what subject you want to study. Let's say science. Then you will be able to select or download resources na pwede mong pag-aralan sa DepEd Commons. All of the most essential learning competencies of DepEd are listed in the DepEd Commons. Pwede natin itong gamitin as a source of our learning materials. So kahit sino po ay pwedeng gumamit ng DepEd Commons as long as you have entered the proper and correct ID number of the school. Once again, 301143 for San Pedro National High School. Okay, let's continue. Speaking of assessment, maybe you are, you will be asking how are you going to grade your learners. This is one way to grade and measure our learners' progress. One is the SIP grade application. Whenever the teacher gave quiz, or examination, we can check the test automatically using this application. We can scan the multiple choice question and automatically we can have the correct answer and we can have the information right away. Pwede natin makita agad dito yung information ni Pata. So makikita natin yung correct answer at kung saan siya nagkamaling sagot. At ano yung information niya sa kanyang progress. Siya ba ay pataas o pababa ang kanyang nararating. So that is the good side of this SIP grade. But this is not alone the only, this is not the only application that we're going to employ. Okay. All in all, these are the platforms or the online application that San Pedro National High School ODL will utilize. First is the Google Drive. The teacher itself, ay merong Google Drive kung saan ito yung aming storage bank ng aming information, materials, and tools. Dito namin sinesave ang aming mga video clips, ang aming mga modules and worksheets, soft copies of the online materials. Automatically, lahat dito ay nasesave lahat ng aming Google Forms at yun ang aming ipinapasa sa Google Classroom. Google Classroom will be the virtual room of the teacher and the learners. There is a specific classroom for a specific section, and only the, the invited student will be the participant or the people inside the classroom. May kanya-kanya tayong Google Classroom. Another platform is the Edmodo. Edmodo is somehow like in Google Classroom wherein there is a interaction with the teacher and the learners using the certain uh, internet languages of the Edmodo. Excuse me. Google Meet and Zoom video conferencing. 
these are the application for us to be able to have a virtual interaction with our learners using the Google Meet and the Zoom video conferencing. Zoom can be a sort of video conferencing whenever there is somebody who had no access with Google Meet and vice versa. Screencastify to record the meeting or to record the ongoing discussion or lesson. The SIP grade for assessment. Sightboard for the interactive uh, and collaborative discussion between the, the learner and the teacher together with the Padlet. And also the Depth and Commons as learning portals for the materials needed in the lessons. And OBS additional is the for me to be able, for the teacher to be able to have a live broadcasting or streaming of the ongoing lesson if it is necessary. All in all, these are the proposed or the application that we're going to utilize and employ during this online distance learning modality. Kung mapapansin ninyo, walang nakalagay na Facebook or Messenger dito or even YouTube. Yes. We are recommending or we are not suggesting the use of Facebook and Messenger. Since we know that we cannot filter the information in Facebook and in Messenger. Apo, we are conditioning our learners to use what the DepEd is requiring us to utilize. Yun po yung ating ginagamit. And of course, YouTube, maaari natin gamitin as basis. Pero we cannot uh, identify which is precise and correct information para sa ating data information gathering. Hindi lahat kasi na nasa YouTube ay tama. Ito lamang ay mga channel, video, save data ng mga vloggers or even the practitioners of YouTube. So that is. Let's continue. This is what I'm talking about earlier. May dalawa tayong pattern na susundin. Ito yung tinatawag nating synchronous at asynchronous learning. Sa synchronous learning, ito yung nagaganap tuwing meron tayong video conferencing. It's either we are using the Google Meet or Zoom video conferencing. In synchronous, there is a virtual interaction between the learner and the student. Nagkikita si bata at siguro sa pamagitan ng internet connection. At doon nagkakaroon discussion or lecture using the available and enabled activities online. And talking about asynchronous, ito naman yung gawain ng ating mga mag-aaral or ng ating mga anak behind online connections. What I'm talking about is Ito yung mga gawain iniwan ni Guru noong sila ay nasa video conference na pwede silang hindi magtagpo sa video conference at iiwan na lamang yung mga gawain. For example, nagbigay si teacher na gawain ni bata using the Word document or the Microsoft Office Word kung saan siya doon ay magsasagot, magta-type ng gawain niya at ipapasa na lamang online. Then pwede rin si bata ay magkaroon ng performance tasks. Pwede siya magawa o mag-create ng kanyang saniling pautun or sarili niyang uh, video clip kung saan ipipaste na lamang niya or ipopost sa Google Classroom to send his or her response. At pwede rin gumawa sila ng worksheets or module activities na hindi na kinakailangan na magkaroon pa ng video conference using the Google Meet. That is what we call asynchronous. Moreover, in synchronous learning that involves a group of students engaging in learning at the same time. Dito, merong specific oras na itinalaga para sila ay magkaroon ng video conference. Yun yung tinatawag nating scheduled time for their meeting. Sa asynchronous naman, hawak ni bata ang kanyang oras kung kailan niya gagawin yung specific instruction or direction ni teacher for him or her to accomplish the task given. So that is what we call asynchronous. In addition, live classes 
in each subject may be conducted during their first meeting is scheduled for the week to set direction. Yes, whenever there is a video conference using the Google Meet, dito na magbibigay si teacher ng mga instruction, ng mga direction, kung ano yung mga kainakailangan nilang i-accomplish with that specific week na kanilang pag-aaral. So magbibigay si teacher ng mga additional na gawain na hindi kinakailangan na na magkaroon pa ng video conference. Ayun po. Also, live classes during the following days, if any, may be devoted to giving feedback. Hindi naman kinakailangan na araw-araw kayong may discussion sa Google Meet. Ito ay makakatulong rin para makasave tayo ng data loads natin at ng ating screen time using the internet connectivity that we have. So makakatulong to na sa online distance learning pala, hindi pala kinakailangan na lagi tayong nasa, nahar, nasa harap ng screen at nakakonek sa internet. Maring ang gawain ni bata ay using the computer lamang without the connection at gumagawa siya ng gawain iniwan ni teacher. At sa susunod na schedule ng kanilang synchronous learning, doon ngayon magtatanong si, si teacher sa mga feedback and responses ng ating mga mag-aaral regarding sa instruction na iniwan niya the previous scheduled time na ibinigay. This helps build a community in the class, engages students, and makes the learning more interactive. The other days of the week will be for the asynchronous learning. So like what I've said earlier, it doesn't mean that we are facing the screen every day. Okay pa. And also, synchronous learning shall be conducted with a limited period each day in order to conform with the screen time guidelines by age, by age recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics and World Health Organization. This is what I'm talking about. The key stages provided the, by the AAP and WHO. Nagtalaga tayo ng ating guidelines to be observed. What we have is the key stage. Key stage number one, for grade kinder to grade three. At most, one hour daily for kindergarten and one hour to 1.5 hours for grades one to three. Meaning sa ating mga anak na kinder up to grade three, isang oras hanggang isang oras kalahati lamang sila sa isang araw dapat nakaharap sa computer screen at nakakonek sa internet connectivity. Letter B, key stage number two. Para naman sa grades four to six, up to two hours lamang sila each day na nakaharap sa computer screen. And letter C, key stage number three. Dito papatak tayong junior high school. Grade seven to grade ten. Up to two hours for grade seven and eight. Remember, up to two hours for grades seven and eight, and up to four hours for grades nine and ten. Two hours in the morning, and the other two hours in the afternoon. Okay. And letter D, key stage number four, if we have children who are studying in grades 11 and 12, at most four hours, two hours in the morning, and other two hours in the Afternoon, almost the same with the key stage number three. And we will be focusing on key stage number three. I'll be showing an example scheduled time for the specific grade level. Sample scheduled for grade seven and grade eight, like what the American Academy of Pediatrics and World Health Organization propose, up to two hours each day, lamang ang grade seven at grade eight. For example, the scheduled subject for Monday are English and Filipino. One hour in the morning and one hour in the afternoon. Okay, so that is the only schedule lang pala ng ating mga anak. Hindi pala buong araw nakatutok ang bata sa computer. At hindi buong araw ay nakakonek ka sa internet. At hindi buong araw ay meron kang data loads. So may specific scheduled day and time for the specific subject. Yun po. So for grade 7 and 8, 
two hours lamang sila. One in the morning and one in the afternoon. Another example, in Wednesday, for example, one hour silang may science and one hour din silang may mathematics. So, pumapatak na dalawang oras lamang bawat subject sa isang linggo. Okay. That is part of the synchronous learning. Dito nagaganap ngayon sa synchronous, like what I've said, meron silang interaction sa video conference using the Google Meet and the Google Classroom. Dito nagkakaroon sila ng pali palitan ng information. Okay, that is part of the synchronous learning pattern. Meanwhile, in a synchronous learning, this is the submission of outputs, assignment, and time tests. Example, Monday and Tuesday, that is the time allotted for English subject. Okay, compressed into two hours. Then, during Wednesday, that is the day allotted for the submission of outputs for English. Okay, so ibig sabihin, may allotted scheduled na ang bawat subject kung kailan mo isasubmit ang mga requirements na binigay sa iyo ni teacher during the synchronous. At yun yung mga bagay na i-accomplish mo during outside the environment of video conference. Yun yung time na wala ka na sa internet connectivity. Yun yung time na wala ka na sa video conference. Yun yung mga gagawin mo sa mga oras na bakante ka. For example, during Monday, isang oras ka lang naman sa umaga at isang oras ka lang sa hapon. Then yung the rest, na wala ka na sa harap ng, ng iyong screen, yun yung oras para i-accomplish mo, yung gawain mong kailangan mong isubmit sa asynchronous learning pattern natin. Doon sa scheduled day na kailangan mong isubmit yung mga requirements mo. So, ang kagandahan dito sa online distance learning, meron ka ng video conference with a teacher at ng iyong mga classmate na kikita mo pa. Ang isa pa, may oras ka pa para magdawa ng mga allotted requirements na binigay sa iyo ni teacher. At meron ka ang oras para gawin ito at isubmit sa specific scheduled time ng bawat subject. Hindi ngayon magkakaroon ng cramming ang bata kasi nga naka-schedule na kung anong subject ang kailangan ko lamang isubmit for the specific day. Example, during Friday, ang kailangan ko lamang isubmit ay science at mathematics. So, ang iyong mga subject teachers together with your advisor ay may communication and connection na sa specific na araw lamang ngayon, yun lamang yung kanilang tatanggapin na mga submission. So, depende pa rin sa pag-uusap ninyo ng iyong teacher. So, yun ay depende sa consensus na, na mabubuo sa inyo between your advisor or subject teacher together with your classmates. That is the good point of ODL. May specific and allotted period of schedule na sinusunod at talagang nakatalaga sa bawat subject. Okay, that is for grades 7 and 8. And here we have the grades 9 and 10. Like what I've said earlier, they will compress into 4 hours. 2 hours in the morning and 2 hours in the afternoon. Okay. Ang atin naman mag-aaral sa grade 11 na grade 9 at grade 10, dalawang oras lamang sila sa umaga at dalawang oras lamang sila sa hapon. During the synchronous, ganun din katulad ng akin nabanggit kanina, magkakaroon sila na dito ng video conferencing using the Google Meet and they will be having their discussion and lecture with the interaction and collaborative discussion with their teacher and classmates. And right after that, the same way, meron kayong allotted time to submit your outputs and that will be your asynchronous learning. Nadagdagan lamang kayo ng tig isang oras kumpara sa grade 7 at grade 8. Of course, we are observing your age according to American Academy of Pediatrics and the Guidelines of World Health Organization. Kung ilang oras lamang ang nakatalaga sa bawat edad ng ating mag-aaral in regards in facing the screen of the computer and in regards with the connection with the internet. Okay, yun yung kagandahan dito sa ODL. Okay, each student or each class will be given a schedule. And this is worked out by our sectioning and enrollment committee. Okay. Another information that we need to observe 
the 2020 rule of the American Optometric Association. Kung meron tayong age limit sa paggamit ng screen, meron ding itinalaga para naman sa ating mga mata. Of course, we are facing the screen of our computer. We are exposed to radiation of the screen. If you have the eyeglasses, wala po itong grado. Sinusuot ko lamang to for me to avoid the radiation. Ito po ay anti-radiation eyeglass. So it is good that we can help this if our learners are in ODL classes. Kita nyo, nagbabago yung kanyang ilaw it's because ito ay nagkokontra ng ating radiation coming from our screen, which is a good point. The American Optometric Association recommends the 2020-20 rule. For example, in grade 7 and grade 8, since they will be having one hour in the morning and one hour in the afternoon, every hour where one needs to look away from the screen every 20 minutes, sa, sa loob ng isang oras, meron tayong tatlong 20 minutes, right? In every 20 minutes, ang bata ay mabibigyan ng 20 seconds na ilayo ang kanyang tingin sa screen 20 feet away. So, ibig sabihin, may break na 20 seconds each 20 minute sa loob ng isang oras. Ganun po. All in all, may one minute break in one hour. 20 seconds each 20 minutes and 20 feet away from the screen ang kanyang focus para makapagpahinga ang kanyang mata. And I recommend and I suggest to look in a green visual background. Gusto tayo sa kulay green para ma-relax at ma makapagpahinga ang ating mga mata. Ganun din, it is also recommended that children should walk away from the screen for at least 10 minutes every hour. For example, in grades 9 and 10, since they will be having a class of 2 hours in the morning and 2 hours in the afternoon, every 1 hour or every hour, they will be given a 10-minute break for them to rest. They can have a rest for their eyes and also they can have a bio break or the use of comfort room. So, maraming factors na isinalang-alang dito sa online distance learning. At ito lahat ay para sa kabutihan ng ating mga bata or ng ating mga anak, which is a good point in this ODL. Okay, let's continue. In online distance learning, learners and parents shall be capacitated on the use of the learning management system. That's why San Pedro National High School had an orientation first with the faculty members. Nagkaroon po ng orientation sa online application and platforms ang mga guro. At yun po ay natapos na namin. Lahat ng mga guro na magtuturo under the online distance learning modality had their orientation in these platforms. Next is the student orientation. Nagkaroon na po ng first batch orientation ang mga bata in regards with these online platforms. And this one, the thing that we are having right now, is the orientation with the parents, learners, the LGU officials, and the other stakeholders that will comprise the institution. Ito po yung nagaganap natin na pagtutulungan na nagaganap ngayon sa ating modalities. And also, we will be providing the necessary application or platforms needed by our learners. Kung mapapansin ninyo, ang lahat na namin inintroduce na mga application is those or are those application na hindi na kinakailangan i-install pa sa laptops or sa cellphone ni bata. Para na rin makasave ng kanyang data at makasave din ng space ng kanyang storage sa kanyang laptop or Android phones. Ito yung mga on-the-go online platforms or enabled activities available online. So, yun po yung ating mga gagamitin, which is a good side in ODL. Schools may organize professional development. Yes, it is true that we teachers needs an orientation in regards with the use of this application or platforms, which is already been done. Nagawa na po natin to. Ang teacher po ay tuloy-tuloy sa 
pagkakaroon ng learning action cell o kung saan nagkakaroon kami ng mga webinars and trainings in regards with the use and utilization of this application and online platforms. And also, teachers shall present lesson in more than one format within the learner's capacity. Yes, differentiated pa rin po yung instruction na i-deliver namin sa mga bata. Katulad nung ating face-to-face -face interaction before in a normal situation, the same thing, it is that we are just in the new normal. Ganun pa rin ang ating gagawin. Kakaroon pa rin tayo ng differentiated instruction. Hindi sapat lamang na nagkaroon kayo ng discussion using the Google Meet. Magpo-provide pa rin si teacher ng save and recorded video clips na ibibigay sa ating mga bata to catch up with the lesson. And additional remediation tools para sa kanila at makapagbigay pa rin ng karagdagang kaalaman at maabot pa rin ang pangangailangan ng ating mga bata. Hindi kami titigil sa pagbibigay ng information just in online. And also, even though we are in the background or even though we are outside the online connectivity, nagbibigay pa rin kami ng information sa ating mga anak. That is what we call synchronous and asynchronous learning patterns of online distance learning modality, which is a good side of ODL. Okay. That is what you call the supplementary materials needed by the students. This is just one example of the orientation that we had in our learners and in our students. For example, in grade seven, we have eight sections under ODL. Nagkaroon na kami ng facilitator at ng class manager. And they will be the advisor of that specific classes. Okay, ibig sabihin may kanya-kanya na kaming Google Classroom sa so grade 7, grade 8, grade 9, and even in grade 10. So we have the list of the ODL students and also we are still accepting ODL learners. So ito na po yung ating nabuong mga schedule o nabuong sections na may kanya-kanya ng 40 students per class. At may kanya-kanya na silang Google Classroom. But we are still Inviting everyone to join the classroom for that specific section. Okay. Ito po yung ginagawa na natin ngayon sa kasalukuyan. At magpapatuloy pa rin po ang ating second batch of orientation ang ating mga learners. And hopefully this will help our uh, parents for them to be uh, to observe the condition of their children. Marami nagtatanong kung pwede pang ilipat ang modular to ODL and vice versa ODL to modular. And this orientation will help to answer their queries and questions. And all in all, this is the learning continuity plan under the online distance learning modality. We have the workforce for ODL. Nagkakaroon na kami ng pagkakatulong-tulungan dito. Then we introduce through trainings and webinars, we facilitate the process and pre-procedure, and we implement the utilization, and also monitoring online delivery. Hindi natatapos sa pagbibigay lamang ng instruction. We monitor kung nasa ng kaming bahagi ng aming goal or ang aming objective for this specific learning condition that we have right now. And also, we are evaluating the mastery of competencies. Hindi sapat lamang na deliver namin yung discussion or yung instruction sa mga bata in Google Meetings or in video conferencing. We are monitoring and we are evaluating, we are assessing and measuring the condition or the outputs or the progress of our learners. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang ating uh, pagtuturo with or without the interaction of the teacher. So, Automatically, in ODL, we are helping each other. Kaya po nagkaroon tayo ng general orientation. We, as the teacher, will help your children. And also, we are asking for your cooperation, coordination, and, of course, your understanding. We learn as one. This is Sir Jonathan V. Mayo. Thank you so much, and God bless this learning delivery modalities.